in this video and it's only a vlog about my dip meter that I made. I published this schematic on YouTube and here it is in its final stage. Uh, backside made with triplex wood, only the front side is made with tin plate. Uh, and I've talked about that, talking about the so-called hand effect, etc. etc. So this is what it is. And it works quite good. Here is the coil that I've now connected. Approximately four or five windings of installation wire. Uh, say two millimeters diameter. And let's look on which frequencies this coil will uh, send out radio signals. Electromagnetic signals. Um, the potentiometer here is on approximately 10 picofarad. So that means that with this coil we can go to the highest frequencies uh, that this generator, this dip meter. It's not only a dip meter, by the way, it's also a test oscillator. That's an important thing that I want to tell. Uh, because you can also use this uh, circuit as a kind of oscillator that can generate frequencies between approximately 20 mega cycles and and now I found that with the spectrum analyzer also on very high frequencies and then we are talking about harmonics but anyway uh, first how the, the, the practical side of the story. Here is my tiny spectrum analyzer. Uh, when I switch the dip meter, the test oscillator off here, it works on 9 volts. You can see that all the say straight out frequencies are gone. And it's important to tell that with this oscillator um, we see on the uh, frequency analyzer the ground frequency, we see a, a second harmonic, a third harmonic, a fourth harmonic, etc. etc. And you can set um, that they appear by these two knobs here. So you need uh, this analyzer or a frequency counter when you use this dip meter uh, you can set that here with these two knobs the bias oscillator that sets the bias of the uh, BD139 transistor the oscillator transistor and here the sensitivity they combine they work together and let me show it so there's a practical issue, I switch it on now, here I see all these, I see here the ground frequency, second harmonic, uh, another harmonic and, and more harmonics and they go from, and I can do that here with that tiny knob, you can point out where the peaks are, that's interesting, so here we have a peak uh, on 3 to 5 megahertz. That is a harmonic of this coil. And we have a peak here, here, I have to somewhat unhandy, but anyway, we have a peak here on My camera must zoom in. We have a peak here on 260 megahertz. Also an harmonic. And let's go further with the. Here we have a peak on 194 megahertz. And furthermore, we have a peak 
of this oscillator on 130 megahertz we have of course here the fm band the normal radio band going from 88 megahertz to approximately 110 megahertz so i'm going to skip that and here is the ground frequency of this dip meter coil it is test oscillator that's 65.3 megahertz that's generated here with this coil and with the tuning capacitor of 10 picofarad and perhaps very interesting to tell that there's also stray capacitance so i've now here indicated 10 picofarad could be sorry to say that it is in reality approximately 20 picofarad but that are all uh, say the most important and interesting things that you can uh, find out when you are doing serious radio experiments with oscillators etc etc so here uh, I don't don't show the schematic again I will surely give the links to the schematic in the text box and here is what I wanted to tell it's only a vlog and you have seen the first harmonic the third the fourth harmonic etc etc so uh, this is a kind of good ID 40 megahertz multiplied by 2 is 80 megahertz uh, 40 megahertz multiplied by 3 is 110 megahertz that's that are the harmonics and there are even an odd harmonics as far as I know correct me if I'm wrong uh, a sine wave in general uh, creates even harmonics but when we are talking about a square wave this is of course a sine wave oscillator otherwise it was not usable due to the fact and that's what I wanted to tell that a square wave oscillator has a lot of harmonics so many harmonics both even and odd uh, that in such a case you could see here all kinds of peaks etc etc So, um, I don't want to go too deep in that matter. When you are really interested, study, for instance, the work of Mr. Fourier. He has made an analysis, a French mathematician. He has made an analysis of uh, all these waveforms and concluded that all uh, waveforms can be say unbounded to the sine wave in a certain way in mathematical ways and say that's not my cup of tea I have to say that but when you are interested in mathematics and radio theory etc etc this is an interesting um, person and especially how he uh, has talked and written about um, the analysis of all kinds of waves be it a sine wave be it a square wave be it other waveforms etc much more information perhaps a good I don't know that of course but anyway on Wikipedia and well that was more or less all to tell from my side my approach is always say kind of practical and this is more or less the base information that you can study so let's look again to the dip meter could be interesting I have to take a screwdriver and the first thing that I wanted to show is that the sensitivity and the bias 
of the oscillator work together. And let's look at the screen with the lamps out. Uh, what happens when we uh, change the sensitivity of the uh, dip, dip meter alias test oscillator? And I'm going to do that now. And you will surely see that on a certain moment the oscillator doesn't work or only works on, say, other harmonics here. That's interesting. So I align now here again the sensitivity effect. Uh, both things, the sensitivity via the Darlington uh, transistor, uh, don't have to do with, with each other. But because there is perhaps a a quite fierce coupling between the oscillator and the LED indicator, there is a kind of influence. So, when I set the sensitivity here, do nothing. Anyway, there's a very broad band on the uh, sensitivity potentiometer where the whole circuit works properly, very, very properly. So, and here it even works at its best. Of course, I can set the bias, the bias of the oscillator circuit, and when you study the schematic, that will be clearly seen is responsible for the oscillation. So here now I'm uh, changing the bias. And of course, it's clear that when you change the bias of an oscillator transistor, the transistor gets to an other working point and it does not want to oscillate. So here there is a critical point somewhere. And for everyone liking to, uh, liking to copy this circuit, this is interesting perhaps, there's a critical point somewhere here in that bias uh, potentiometer where the circuit works at its best. And here it is. Take some distance. So here all oscillations stop. Of course also the harmonics stop. They're completely logical. The harmonics depend on the simple fact that the oscillator must oscillate on its ground frequency. So here is a critical point somewhere where the whole circuit works at its best. Well, that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Of course, I can say give the tuning capacitor a small turn. That will, of course, change the base frequency. It changes the base frequency when I do that here. You can see it here on the tiny spectrum analyzer. Changes the, the base frequency and it, of course, also changes the harmonics. And then I mean the frequency where the harmonics appear. And this is also interesting on a certain moment here. Well, okay, no problem. I saw that uh, it, it did not oscillate any longer. But anyway, this was all.